Good morning. Happy New Year. It is mon Monday. Yes, January 1st of 2024. And <laughs> we are, I met, I was talking with the group of us that are here and meeting and we're all in our pajamas and we're all cozy. And, you know, I'm looking at the astrology. The astrology has got this like beautiful little square between Venus and Saturn today. So there's this like thing going on today where we kind of want to just do whatever we want to do. And then we also feel this like extra edge of, I don't know, maybe societal pressure, obligation, something. And I'm, I'm finding that there's space for all of it. There's space for the responsible version of us. There's space for the relaxed version of us. There's, it's all actually the same thing. This whole initiation for this week is about the two of pentacles. And it's a lot about juggling two versions of ourselves, two opportunities for manifestation. We can manifest something based on the old momentum and the old patterns, and we can manifest something based on new behaviors and new patterns. And it's okay for both of them to exist at once. If you consider the act of, you know, juggling, you might hold one for a moment and then throw it and hold the other. And all of that is perfectly okay. And oftentimes when we integrate two separate things, two alternate perspectives, if we hold two um, ingredients or qualities at once, something fully new is actually created. And so this week we have this dance where maybe we feel a tango with some of our old patterns, or we feel the momentum of some of our old, um, I don't know, behavioral strategies. And maybe we have this idea of all these new things that we want to manifest or create or you know, do differently. And what if instead of being all one or all the other, we kind of created a holistic, we held both of them. We created a holistic um, sensation that, that all of it can come together and create something that's not like the old and not so um, like, so strictly the new, you know, I definitely entertained visions of like, what if I just got really strict and rigid and I did this thing and I did it every day. And I was like, realistically, is that setting me up for something for success? Like, is that my nature even? Not really. Like my nature is very cyclical. Most of our natures are pretty cyclical. And if we try to dominate our natural rhythm, we're likely going to find ourselves not in a space of joy eventually. And so I think that this week's initiation really is, especially after the week we had last week, last week on the day after Christmas, we had a full moon in Cancer and then we had Chiron beginning to move direct at the same time. And that I'm, I have a phrase that I learned. I'm taking a intimacy, a group intimacy therapy container with my friend Jordan Marks. And he introduced this concept called the extinction burst. And he described that right before we're ending a pattern, a pattern that maybe hasn't been helping us or a pattern that we were unconscious of in the past, right before that pattern releases or right before we give it up, there's a little extinction burst where the pattern tries to assert itself really, really, really strongly. And it's, it's just like a last plea for, to try and hook into us, to try and like grasp on before it, before it completely expires. And last week, there may have been some kind of events that were like that, whether that was an extinction burst of certain thoughts we were having, behaviors that we've we've indulged in or that we knew that we wanted to shift. So maybe really emotional things or emotional stories that we were telling ourselves with the Cancer Moon. But in any case, we've moved now into this new week and we are kind of tangoing with this, I don't know, societal pressure to recreate this new, this new life, this new vibration. And it's not just societal. The astrology is also bringing in a new era with Pluto moving into Aquarius around the 20th of this month. There is this anticipation of something new coming into our world, a new way of 
connecting with our life, a new way of showing up, a new way of expressing ourselves. The opposite of Aquarius energy is Leo. And whenever we have anything aspecting one side of an equation, the other side is always going to also be amplified. So if we've got this Aquarian energy where, you know, yeah, there's so much information about how to stand out in social media and how to express your message and how to serve your clients or like how to, you know, blah, blah, blah. There's all this stuff, but ultimately you can't really balance that. You can't really be all of that. You can't lose yourself in all of that. The real juice of the new era, the next 20 year cycle is in really owning your own specific craft, recipe, talent, voice, story, way of being really, really, really owning that really dialing that in, really seeing how it's so different, that you are uniquely different. You have a different flavor and voice and resonance and frequency than anybody else. And that thing is actually the most valuable thing. And coming into that over the next 20 years is the opportunity that we all get. Everyone who's alive right now, we all get that opportunity. And that is what creates the color of the fibers, the color of the string that we are in this planet that's a part of the larger tapestry. It's a beautiful tapestry of information and frequencies and energies, every single person showing up together in all of their different levels of consciousness and all of their different ways of seeing the world. This is how we create the tapestry of human consciousness. And I, the more that we can really own our unique flavor, the more that that thread does the thing that it does in the larger picture. And so, yeah, um, while it's tempting to follow other people's recipes or follow formulas, you know, the moon's in Virgo today. And so we're wanting to kind of cultivate some kind of process for ourselves the more that we can cultivate that specific, individuated, sovereign process and really own that, the more that we will brighten the thread that we are as an individual and a human and add to the tapestry that impacts everyone else. So there's, if you have the planner, uh, there is sort of a checklist in the planner for the initiation this week kind of asking where we give our authority and if we're giving a lot of authority to outside forces we might feel a shift this week as we realize how much of our own individuation and our own um, flavor we're giving authority we're giving that away we're giving that power away and so Today might be, this week might be a week where we ask ourselves, are, am I choosing that because someone else told me to choose that or because I never questioned that in myself? Or is this actually something that I deeply desire for myself? Um, I'm going to just read off a couple. There's like six bullet points that you might want to ask yourself as the week goes by. Um, how do you know the difference between giving yourself inner authority or giving the external authority? One, do you catch yourself changing your authentic behavior to avoid conflict? Two, are you feeling deeply called to take an action, but feel obligated to take a different action? Three, are you still negotiating the now moment so that you can be happier in a future time? Those are the three things you might want to ask yourself if you're feeling internal conflict. And then three more questions to ask. Are you feeling able to take inspired action in the present moment without questioning if it's going to be okay? Do you trust that everything that is happening, pleasant or unpleasant, is happening for you? And are you curious to, to discover how it's for you? And is it exciting to just feel your feelings and speak your truth and behave in your nature, knowing that it's aligned to your innate wisdom and that it will lead to exactly where you're destined to go? So the quality of 
our experience depends on the quality of questions we ask ourselves. And I am always trying to ask myself a question that will open up even more information, even more authenticity. And this week, as you're asking yourself questions, you might find that that's your dance. That's your tango. Maybe there's old questions that you ask yourself, and maybe there's a new question you can begin asking that changes the rhythm of the dance for you. So um, now to go into the day by day, the first starts out pretty strong. I'm actually going to talk about Sunday. So yesterday, I'm going to talk about a little bit about the last week. So, cause we didn't really meet last week. I had a longer video two weeks ago, basically last week we had that situation the day after Christmas, things were really vulnerable and emotional, but then some type of joy and lightness started breaking through on Friday and Saturday. And then Sunday, Jupiter started moving direct and we were getting really clear on reality. The moon was in Virgo and it was probably a space. Maybe something happened. Maybe some kind of interesting clarity started to break through that helped you to see your reality from a different perspective. And this probably was brought about by the literal date um, maybe, you know, obviously I also think that it has to do with where the moon is and what the planets are doing, but coincidentally, we also had a new, a calendar changeover. So that sort of added to the momentum. Um, if you had an event on Sunday that helped you to get really clear on your reality, that would have brought you into today where you're reconciling your ambition and reality. You're holding both of these things at once. Ambition is not a bad thing and reality is not a bad thing. And when we can reconcile our ambitions with our realities, we can keep a more grounded approach to the process in which we take. And maybe, maybe our ambition is just to double down on being more real and present, which will create greater impact in our relationships and potentially do everything it's meant to do. So I'm not suggesting that your ambition has to be to create these goals and change your behavior dramatically. Our ambition literally could be to just stay with what's present and real with us. The moon's in Virgo on Monday and Venus is in a square to Saturn. That's what I talked about a little bit earlier today. Mercury is also moving direct. So we're kind of reconciling <laughs> we're reconciling, we're reconciling our ambition. Our real. That's, that's like what we're doing. I could say it over and over, but, um, on Tuesday, the moon will still be in Virgo. It'll move into Libra. The energy for Tuesday is that we're choosing to harmoniously balance the equation. We're choosing to have a greater level of acceptance for what is and a greater level of awareness of what could be. What could be and what is and accepting both, creating harmony, balancing that equation with grace. On Wednesday, the moon will be in Libra and it'll be square to the sun. It's the, the, the quarter square, the first quarter square. Um, what we see on Wednesday is that in order to balance that equation, balance requires some change, some change. It doesn't have to be dramatic. It could be if, if that's what feels good, but some shifting in our lives in a graceful, harmonious way will help to balance the equation to create greater presence and harmony for ourselves. And then on Thursday, the moon will still be in Libra, but it'll be opposite Chiron. So last week when Chiron started moving direct, the day after Christmas, when you had that Maybe you had that little extinction burst of behaviors or thoughts or feelings that might have brought something to your awareness. And on Thursday, when the moon is across from that location, we're willing to set a new foundation. And that is supported by Mars moving direct in Capricorn. Um, I mean, Mars has been direct, but Mars is moving into Capricorn. So as Mars moves into the earthy work motivated sign of Capricorn, Mars is ready to actually lay down that new foundation in a real and tangible way. So we're kind of 
using this week to prepare ourselves for new kinds of balancing behaviors and setting a new foundation by Thursday. On Friday, the moon will move into Scorpio and we are drawing new lines for ourselves. The moon will move into Scorpio. Whenever the moon moves into Scorpio, that's when we go deep and we understand where the boundaries should be, where we want our boundaries to be, whether we want those boundaries to open up or get more clear. Boundaries create the safety for us to expand, trust, be intimate, be real. And so drawing the lines for ourselves on Friday will actually help to support these healthy, harmonious changes that we're initiating. And then on Saturday, the sun will be in a square to Chiron while the moon is in Scorpio. And I believe on Saturday, we're going to see the work of the medicine. So whatever that extinction burst last week was about, whatever new changes we're making this week, we're going to begin to see the work of the medicine, whether that means what work we want to apply ourselves to as the medicine for our lives, or whether that medicine is now working in our system. That will be the clarity that we get when the sun squares Chiron on Saturday. So I feel it's a... It's a humble beginning. It's a, a beginning where we have a lot of faith and trust. We have a lot of personal accountability. We we understand what it takes to actually be present in our lives. I think that we have a willingness to bring patience and presence to our relationships. And I feel that we we do really have the energy and the momentum to create any kind of positive shifts that will align us for 2024. Now, the energy is going to quicken. We're going to have, I actually recorded a pretty long um, podcast and it should be released today. So I'll make sure wherever I'm on social media, I'll post that. I, I recorded a podcast with um, the human design woman I've been collaborating with. And she and I talked about the energy of the progression of this month. We're going to have a kind of, pressure building throughout the month with a nice breakthrough around the 20th. And so this week is the window of time where we can create some proactive shifts in ourselves so that as the pressure builds, we can just respond and adapt to the pressure and allow it to work on us and allow it to work through us. So that's what this is all about. The reason I trust astrology. The reason I follow it and tune into it is because I love knowing how to surrender to what will serve me best at any given time. Surrender to the push, surrender to the release, surrender to the shifts or the changes, whatever is required. I found that just tuning in and going with it helps me to see wherever I'm in resistance or wherever I'm, I'm, I don't know. Yeah. Dancing with something that maybe hasn't, ha is not serving me anymore. Um, so I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to hear how your new year's feeling and starting. I would love to receive anything that you have to share with me in the comments. Please share this video with anyone that you feel it could serve. I'm going to be offering a live 2024 overview where I'm going to go over five really important changeovers that are happening in 2024, how that will show up in our lives on a tangible level and how it might show up for the collective. And I'm doing that on Friday at 10 a.m. Pacific. And I don't know what the platform I'm doing it yet, but just stay tuned on my social media. Follow me on lunation.live at Instagram if you're not following me there. And of course, I'll, I'll be announcing it. So you won't miss it if you want to get to it. Um, what else do I need to say? <laughs> I think that's it. Happy 2024. It's the year of really owning who we really are and knowing that that is well and good enough. And I believe that when we do that, the paradigm of relationship will shift so dramatically and so profoundly that we're going to have the most authentic year that we've ever experienced.
So I'm, I'm, I'm here for it and I'm excited and hopeful and so accepting of myself. And I hope that you can grant yourself the same grace. Thank you so much and happy new year.